Hey everybody and welcome to this week's edition of A Double Feature where we're looking at the 2010 film directed by Edgar Wright, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, which, um, cards on the table is one of my more favorite movies, um, of the, the past, I don't know how many years. It's right up there. Um, I don't know how many times I've watched this. It's a hoot. Every single time. Um, and taking it from saying your review, you enjoyed it as well. However... Oh my goodness, yes. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> um, you, you left me in a bit of an odd spot there at the end when you're trying to talk about audiences and you just give this very enigmatic ending that the film, and I quote, was made to link all people together in a discussion we can't get enough of, the exploring of generational and cultural divides. All right, so please elucidate. Um, what cultural divides? Ah, I'm so asked. I was hoping you would. <laughs> Are we talking about the Canadian-American cultural divides? Those crazy Canadians. You know, um... Yeah. Um... The reason I left the, my ending so, um... Um... Inconclusive, I suppose, is the best word, maybe? I don't know. Uh, vague, whatever you want to call it. Because... This is a conversation that I've noticed myself having quite frequently amongst a variety of people, whether it be a bunch of people my age at work or older people at church or whatever. And the age range is quite varied, but we seem to have we always get to this discussion about how life was back then and what life will be like in the future. And we talk about these cultural pieces kind of intertwined in these conversations like, oh, do you think we'll, I mean, music, the digital musical downloads is so huge. Do you think, you know, we'll have that in the future or what will that be like? Or, oh, gosh, I loved going to the store and, and buying up the old VHS and putting it in the VCR. And so all these different cultural phenomenons that I think are quite adequately expressed. And like I said in my review, like, I could probably watch that movie again and pick up on even more pop cultural references that I totally missed. Oh, yeah. I think it's just full of it. And so I feel like this film did that for me. It met every single one of my needs, but I would argue that it would meet everyone's needs older than me and younger than me. This isn't, this is a gender neutral, cultural neutral, age neutral film. Well, I don't know if I would go that far. I mean, it has a very liberal bias to it. Sure. So if if but. if you are conservative and you do not like, you know, pro-gay messages, stay away from this film. I'm not saying well, it okay. advocates That's gay relationships, but at the same time, it doesn't condemn right. them and it celebrates them to an extent. No, that's true, and that's fair, that's fair. It's it's not really a political for any means, but I can see how someone might be perhaps offended by some of the things in this movie, so that's that's certainly acceptable. But I just found it interesting that, I don't know, I just kept thinking, you know, who who is this movie for? And I, well, maybe it's for everybody, maybe it's for all of us. I mean, I, I really think this is one of those rare movies where it just did such a good job of adding in all these different elements from pop culture that I think it links generations. It's a linking generational film. Perhaps, but I mean, if you look at the pop culture that they do reference, it is very, very heavy on the 90s and late 80s. I mean, especially well, that's, well, that's fair. with the, with their TV things. Um, oh, for example, the first time I watched it, I was watching it with my in-laws. Um, some of them were born, you know, 98, 99. Um, sure. And they have the little Seinfeld, the Seinfeld riff that comes on. I busted out laughing. They had no clue what in the world was going on. 
um, uh, they it, it gave some of the old Nintendo things. You mentioned in the, your review how about how he levels up when he beats um, bad guys, he gets coins. They had no idea yeah. what that was referring oh, to. Oh, really? Yeah, not a clue. Oh. All right. Um, well, now I'm disappointed. But. So I, I'd say, yeah, I wouldn't go as far as to say it's for everybody. Um, but if you are a child of the you know late 80s, 90s, I'd say the movie's for you. I just, gosh, it was, I just thought some of the writing was extremely clever and just so funny. Like, what are you doing? I'm getting a life. And he gets the, (laughs) oh, that's my favorite. I love that line. But I don't know. I just, something that I thought about as I was watching and I thought it was worth exploring, but obviously there's holes, so I didn't feel like elaborating in my holy argument. (laughs) I see. I see. That's how you you don't want to <laughs> don't want to defend your danglers, so you just throw it out there. Uh, nobody will notice. It's hard. It's hard to defend those guys. <laughs> Fair enough. But but yeah, I still really really enjoyed it, and I thought, especially. Just the way, and, and just the two things that, and one of the things you, you noticed as well, just the way that they brought the comic book to life. Now, again, I haven't read the comic books myself, but I have read other comic books, and so I know about certain things in books. You know, I know panels and all those kinds of things, and, and, and uh, you know, moving and all that kind of stuff. So when they did those kinds of things, it was like, oh, man, this is a comic book movie. Like, this is really... Yeah. This wasn't like a let's let's make it uh you know let's make it realistic let's make it gritty you know let's make it modern up to date you know this was just almost straight from the panels so I really really appreciated that and I also but again I, I grew up playing you know Super Mario Brothers so the gaming stuff at the beginning where we see who owns what in the room and who the people are and their subtitles, I thought that was just so clever and just so just nostalgic that I just loved it. Which is in the, the but, comics or the graphic novels, depending on how snooty you want to be. Sure, sure. Have you read them? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All six of them. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I'm seriously considering purchasing them because <laughs> the movie literally had me laughing so hard I was crying. Uh, they're they're great. Uh, love lo- love the books. I mean, the movie does make some alterations. As I mean, you have to, of course, when you when you of change, course, of course. Um, sure. But this is what I find absolutely fascinating about this movie and these books in particular. Because uh, when they started making the movie, the book series wasn't finished yet. Um, oh, interesting. So it's not a, a, a true adaptation. They got to the end um, uh, of the books, and they say, how does this story end? And so um, they, they basically just figured out, this is how we want the movie to end, and then the the writer of the books, who was working on the screenplay and all of that stuff, went back and wrote the final book based on the decisions made in the movie. So you have this really yeah this really weird thing where this movie is based on the book on this book series except the last book in the series is based somewhat upon the movie. Interesting. That's really cool. So that is really cool. Well, I I really liked your review actually. Uh, I was also very intrigued by the door, but uh, I didn't give much thought to it. I just found it interesting um, that it was in the beginning and in the end, and so. But I, I really liked your analogy of that it's you know or that only can be entered once you. 
basically make a commitment to something, in this case, Ramona, right? So he makes a commitment to Ramona, and therefore they're allowed to enter the door of a home, as you suggest. So I found that interesting. What I was curious about, though, is, is it possible that the door would be more than just commitment and entering into a place of refuge. Could the door... So here's what I was thinking after you said that. I was thinking of the Truman Show. I don't know why the Truman Show popped into my brain. (laughs) But the end scene where... (laughs) I know, right? It's weird. (laughs) The end scene where he walks through the door, he makes that decision, and we all want to know what's next, but I think that's the director's point, is you've been following her the whole time, and so you want to know what's on the other side of the door, but you're not privy to that information. It's only the person who gets to walk through the door that gets to know what's on the other side. Sure. So in this case, you know, you are offering the suggestion that the door means that we've committed to Ramona, we're going through, we're now going to be in a place of safety, it's a, it's a place of refuge from the outside world, a place of comfort, peace, those sorts of things. But I guess my question is, how could we ever really know what's on the other side of the door? We don't know what's going to happen. That's why I just said he's committed, he's going home. How that commitment right. ends up playing out, you're right, we're not privy to that information. And I don't think, in some ethical sense, we're not, we, we shouldn't be privy to that uh, information because a relationship in the home is in the domain of the home. That should not be made public. Oh, well, okay, yeah, fair, private, sure, sure, sure. That makes sense. All right. I also really liked, I didn't pick up on the Pilgrim thing, actually, until I read your review. I just thought, oh, you know, fun name. But I didn't even, th- I didn't even think about it on that level, so you also one up me there. Sorry. Oh, well. So we'll, we'll we'll call that good right now. So if you haven't seen it, go and watch it, um, and you're welcome. Um, <laughs> tell us what you thought about the film uh, in the comments below, or check us out on social media. We'd love to hear what you have to say about Scott Pilgrim versus the world. And did you catch all of the cultural references? We have to we have to see how big of a cultural divide there actually is here. Um, Let's turn in. Check back uh, next week to see what we have going on. And until then, watch good movies.